thank you for coming once again to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. And why is it the air in the air? Because you never know what's going to come up or come down. So, today's theme is baking uh, and beer. So, um, I thought I would uh, try to start changing it up by actually putting... Let me lift this up so it doesn't look like I'm a Vulcan. Um, I started to start changing it up by adding, uh, creating the actual theme for the podcast and see if I can get some people, uh, interview people that I haven't, um, either I didn't know or it's been a while since I talked to or, uh, just new people. And I did, I, w- I reached out, uh, and asked people if anybody was interested in talking about baking and I got two great people, um, interviewed. So before we move on, before we go to the interviews, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about baking. So baking, like music, like um, movies, really trigger uh, emotions and memories in people. Uh, Especially baking because of the smells that are associated with baking. Um, You may have, you know, come across a smell when you're walking in in the mall, well, when there used to be malls, and... um, or outdoor in the uh, shopping strips that have taken over uh, or into just a a regular store uh, especially around the holidays and you'll smell something and it'll trigger an emotion um, or it'll trigger a memory I should say and then with memory usually comes emotion Um, more often than not uh, they will be good memories Uh, Thanksgiving especially you smell the pumpkin pie you smell the lemon meringue pie you smell the turkey and it takes you back to previous Thanksgivings or memories with people that you had where you had a special dinner with. Um, now, to be fair, not all memories that people get triggered due to smells are going to be good. Uh, but that it is what it is what occurs when it comes to smells. Um, and for me, baking has always been a great, uh, great smells, fantastic smells. Um, that are associated with great memories. Um, I know I personally um, like to, when I can, right now I won't be able to, though I might be able to find a way to switch it so that it's uh, less sugar involved or sugar free or some way, but uh, anyway, I digress. Um, My grandmother's, uh, my grandmother Trevino's pineapple upside down cake. Wonderful memories of her uh, baking it, making it, uh, bringing it out of the oven, and then eating it and it was normally special occasions that she would make that Um, and it's not a very difficult thing to to make to bake thank goodness because um, if it's too difficult for me I I probably would just you know ruin it Um, and so I really like to bake that and every time I do it brings great memories of of my grandmother Um, now for my other grandmother my grandmother Ayala um, there was a fig tree outside of uh, outside of her uh, kitchen that she could reach out, if you remove the screen, you could reach out from the kitchen sink window and pull figs off of the tree. Uh, So we didn't do a lot with the figs, but when I eat a fig or when I smell figs, uh, it takes me back to that time to seeing uh, that tree basically coming in through the kitchen window uh, at my grandparents' house. Uh, And so that was always a fond memory of me remembering my grandmother that way. Uh, so, uh, for each of you, I'm sure uh, there are smells that are that are associated with memories, uh, good and bad, and you like to smell them time and time again. Uh, especially this occurs around the holidays, like I said, uh, but it can happen anytime. Uh, I know there's certain fragrances that, um, you know, trigger things for me, and there's certain um, smells associated with... Uh, an old musty room or a cedar closet or uh, actually anything cedar brings back some great memories for me Um, and so uh, think about those when you're listening to the podcast and when you're listening to the interviews that I have um, and think to yourself about them and maybe go and find that smell uh, after the podcast and uh, you know uh, take a whiff and and relive those memories okay so I have two great people that I'm interviewing today. Um, The first one is uh, Candace Coleman. And Candace, thanks Heather for uh, referring Candace to me. Uh, Candace was on the actual reality show called Nailed It. 
So if you don't know what Nailed It is, uh, we talk about it in the interview, but also you might want to go look it up. It's a very interesting uh, uh, baking show. And Candace actually won her episode that she was on. So I, I get to talk to her. It was great talking to her. Uh, I'll probably have her back about beer because she's also a beer aficionado. Um, and we'll talk, uh, we talked a little bit about um, where, how she got on the show, what the show entailed, uh, who kind of judged on the show, um, and her thoughts about doing it, um, and then um, what, it ta- or what it took and what kind of things she likes to bake. So the second person I have is someone that I've known for a long time, since high school. Uh, her name is, uh, let me make sure I get this right, Alethea. That's right, Alethea. I always have problems with her name. I even mentioned that in an interview. I, I apologize, Alethea. You would think after all these years that I would know how to say it correctly, but I still struggle. So Alethea Arnold. Uh, she's still uh, living in San Antonio, uh, enjoying the, the great San Antonio uh, area, and especially uh, centered around baking and all that. And now uh, uh, Alethea has her own... Um, bake to order uh, shop that she does from her house um, so I'm going to post the link um, after the at the end of the podcast so please make it to the end um, and you'll see the links there for her uh, for her little place now she will usually get full up on orders that she can do for the week early on in the week so if you want to get something like for uh, you know back to school for the kids uh, or some kind of uh, celebration or something uh, you can get to her site on Facebook and you'll be able to place an order. Now, uh, currently they are pickup orders, um, unless you're some kind of big corporation or you spend a lot of dough, uh, which uh, then she then she will uh, take the time to be able to uh, deliver them to you, uh, but otherwise uh, be prepared to just go and, and pick them up. Um, and from what I've seen, and I'll see if I can get some, incorporate some pictures of her stuff on here as well. Um, they are fantastic and they look really good. I wish I could order them and drop ship them to me, but maybe the next time I'm in San Antonio, I'll be able to uh, check it out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to uh, Interview Hub. And Interview Hub is going to interview uh, Candace, and then he's going to interview uh, Alethea. Um, and then uh, if everything works out right, I am currently working on, and I have little video snippets, of me making some paleo style uh, blueberry pumpkin muffins. So I'm really hoping that these turn out good. I just got the first batch out. Um, and so that's gonna be at the end because uh, I wanna really show uh, you know, uh, Candace and, and Alethea's uh, interviews. And then we'll see how uh, Chef Hav or Baker Hav actually does. Uh, and then I'll taste test them myself and see how they worked out. So without further ado, here is Interview Hav. Take it away, Interview Hav. Uh, going now. All right. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Podcast Hav. Uh, thanks for all that. Uh, hey, everybody. This is uh, Interview Hav here, and I have with me Candice Coleman, uh, who had the very uh, uh, great, um, what would you say, uh, privilege and honor and winning uh, on uh, the TV show Nailed It. Um, so, uh, Candice, give us a little bit about yourself, and then tell us a little bit about Nailed It for those people who may not know what that show is. Okay, um, so my name is Candace Coleman. Um, I am originally from Colorado, hence my Colorado tattoo. Nice, um, nice. But I've lived in five different states, and currently I am in South Carolina. I'm in the Somerville, Charleston area. Okay. Uh, so that's been pretty fun and exciting, loving the beaches. Um, so what happened was, um, I am a huge Nicole Byer fan. She's like one of my favorite comedians. And so my friend, I went to her house when I was living in Richmond, um, visiting from here from from Richmond at her house. And, uh, she was like, Oh my gosh, you have to see this show. It's so funny. It's got this like lady named Nicole Byer and like Nicole Byer is like pretty vulgar. So I'm like, okay, we'll wait till the kids go to bed and then we'll watch it. (laughs) And she's like, okay. And like, she thought I was so weird about that. And then all of a sudden we started watching it and it was nailed it. And it was so funny because it's these three, you know, um, home, cooks bakers you know and we're all like other ones where you go on pinterest and you see these beautiful designs and you're like oh i can do that it's gonna be amazing and then you make this insane creation (laughs) 
wow. <laughs> doesn't even look anything. Sometimes it doesn't even taste like it's supposed to and stuff. And so um, I'm very known for that. Okay. I'm very known to being adventurous. I love cooking and I love baking definitely because um, my papo and my mom, you know, that was a big thing I would do with them. Um, right. And I'm also kind of a foodie. So I try to recreate the things I like to go to restaurants for and those kind of things. But however, I'm just not like a really good baker and chef. <laughs> so that's why I was like, when those shows spoke to me and I was just like, I have to get on it. Like I have to get on this show. It's just, it totally is me in a nutshell. And, um, the best part about it was it's kid friendly. It was family friendly. Yeah. And I was like, that's even cooler. So like my girls started watching it and they both loved it. And so, um, one day I just, I, I, eat, um, email casting elves and just was like hey like you know I showed him a few of my bakes and stuff and was like what do you think and I got uh you know response like a few months later that they were like okay send us a video and the rest is history so <laughs> wow fantastic so um and so a little bit about the uh like how they handled the show so how many episodes were you actually on or was it just one just one. So okay. I'm, um, I nailed it holiday season two, episode two, a classic Chris mess, M E S S. <laughs> um, and I was, um, and I'm very fortunate that, uh, Maya Rudolph was actually our celebrity judge. Oh, wow. That's yeah, awesome. She, yeah. Like in the top, like female comedians or just even comedians. I'm like, it's yeah. like always been like Tina Fey, Maya Rudolph, Amy Poehler. So I literally melted like when I was walking because they don't tell you who your, your guest is. Right. And most of the time it's like, I mean, it's comedians or maybe it like might be like chefs you don't know of or like right, somebody right, from right. Netflix. You said like and a so B-list I died or something when I like that. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maya Rudolph, that would be awesome. I would, I would love to meet her in person. So uh, that's great. So what was it? Um, you showed me something before we started interviewing. Uh, the tattoo, was that like the final or what was that? Yeah, so this is my final bake. And it is a Santa. It's Wes um, sitting on Santa's lap cake. Oh, wow. And so you'll see like I even yeah. have. So yeah, I actually, this is fresh ink. So I literally got this done a couple of days ago because it was my birthday. Oh, wow. And Thank you. Yeah. So this was the cake that won me $10,000 is my really scary Santa cake. <laughs> hey, that is awesome. That is awesome. So what, um, so what do you do nowadays? Do you still, uh, bake here and there? Do you have any, uh, uh, any thoughts or, uh, you know, ambitions to go on another show or, um, I think that'd be great if they had like a, a call back of all the winners from all the episodes and then they had like another bake off. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I, I would love that. I mean, yeah, because that's the most asked question I've had. And I'm like, I would go back on Nailed It in a second. It was yeah. a once in a lifetime thing. It was so much fun. There was laughter the whole time. And, you know, you have like these two incredibly, com you know, talented comedian mm -hmm. women laughing with you. And then Jock awesome. is hilarious. And so, right. yeah, I would do it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not opposed to going on any other shows. The only sure. bad thing is like, I don't know what else I'm actually good or bad enough at. <laughs> to get another show again. Um, uh, but I, um, but no, I still be, I still, especially like during this quarantine time, um, I actually made, um, I started getting into making pastas. So I made okay. my own lasagna noodles. Wow. Nice. Yeah. From scratch. I made pasta from scratch. Um, I've been making like pretty much anything like it's like, I also was going on cause I'm a huge Disney fan. And like, if you've watched my episode, you know that, cause I talk yeah. about that. Why, that's what I'm doing with my winnings is taking my girls to Disney world. Okay. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, when this, you know, quarantine happened, Disney started putting out their recipes for their churros and those kind of things. So oh. that was what I was doing the whole time was I, every time that they would put out a new, this is a Disney recipe secret, uh -huh. I would actually do it. And then I would, um, Facebook live me doing it and letting people bake along with me if they wanted to. That's so. great. That's awesome. Do you still do that? Um, I haven't lately. And the only reason is because, uh, my best friend actually moved here from LA uh -huh. and so we're getting him settled in and you okay. know kind of doing that routine so yeah oh well you should definitely start that up again I know I'd like to watch some of that and see how it's always fun to watch other people bake especially if it's something that you've baked before to see how they do 
you know, how they do it differently. Do they add something different that you never would think of? And so, I mean, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. Well, and especially for the fact of that's why I like to do it too, because I'm like, you're doing it in real time. Mm -hmm. And also like, I feel like my biggest thing is that I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. And so it's kind of <laughs> nice to watch those instead of like these gorgeous people in their kitchens that are just like so elegant and they have like oh, this yeah. Scene badge. yeah. And like, so people watch me fumble around. They watch me like yelling at my girls, like getting my, my cats <laughs> off the counter, you know? So then you feel like that you're like, you know, and then it doesn't matter what it looks like as long right. as it tastes good. <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. You're right. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. So uh, let me ask you this. So um, what is your go-to uh, baking favorite thing? Like you'll make time and time again. Uh, it just something that you just pull out like, you know, oh, I only have a quick cup quick couple of, you know, 30 minutes or so, I know I can make this. And it's just your go-to bake. What is it? It is my monkey turds. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Monkey turd cookies. So we start, I started making them when I was in Girl Scouts when I was little. Okay. Um, and I would, my family, friends, everybody always refer to them as monkey turds. And so when I moved to Nevada, I told my friends, I'm like, oh, I can make monkey turds because it's nice because it's just like a glop of like a cookie and it just, you know, so it doesn't mean to be presented pretty. They right. just taste amazing. And everybody kept going, oh. And then when I finally served it, they were like, oh, those are called no-bake cookies. And I'm like, what? No, they're called monkey turds. But <laughs> So I'm sticking with monkey turds. That's I, what they're I, called. I would prefer monkey like. turds. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, nothing like serving up a bunch of monkey turds, you know, I mean, it, yeah. it, it just goes over well, just goes over it, well. It does. And I have a five year old. And so I mean, her friends think it's a riot because like, you know, you're like, Oh, I'm gonna serve you guys because I mean, poop and butts and farts are just the, the rage <laughs> right now in the in, house. That is in, in the five year old, uh, you know, clientele that is that is perfect. That's so awesome. Okay, so monkey turds. Yes, that's a, a new name for me. I'll, I'll have to remember that. Um, now what would you, um, a lot of people like to try to push themselves or do a little something different. So what is one of the hardest things that you feel you've had to bake before, whether it was on the show or here, uh, you know, here at home, whatever. So what do you, what, what was the hardest thing? Well, yeah. So both of the things I had to do on the show were bananas town. <laughs> like, so, um, when you watch my episode, they present these ornament hanging, um, cake pops. Yeah, And you have to have them perfect. And the way the decoration goes on, it has to be hanging on the hook. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. Gotcha. So like trying, because like, you know, I made cake pops before, but I've never made something like that intricate and that looked like a real ornament, but it's wow. not. Yeah. And then my Santa is sitting on, um, was sitting on my Santa lap cake. That was insane too. I made, um, it was with fruit cake. Um, so that was like pretty intense as well. Um, another one I made, so I'm a huge Steel Magnolias fan. Um, I'm a huge, okay. like, yeah, I'm a huge film um, person. And so Steel Magnolias is like always hit my heart. And my favorite part of that whole movie is the um, groom's armadillo cake with the um, yes. red velvet. Or, yeah. And so <laughs> I, um, I agree. So one night um, I had friends over who were, you know, um, transplants from the South Carolina area and a bunch of them had never seen the movie before. And so I hosted a movie party and I made my own um, groom's armadillo cake and I like try to shape them as much as I I could right. and then I had blush and bashful like I blush champagne where I put cotton candy in it and then I had bashful which was just like queso that I made pink and like and I did like wow. this whole like steel magnolias fun movie night so people got into it so that was That's, really hard as well that is really cool I like that <laughs> um so okay so we had those two so you still magnolias fan because now last week I did movies so but I'm going to yes. go ahead and ask you this. What you still Magnolias would be one for you. What would be another one of your, your go-to movies that you like to watch again and again? Oh, it's so hard. Cause there's everywhere. I mean, there's anywhere from Tim Burton, um, who I'm a huge fan of, um, Stanley Kubrick, um, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so a well, lot of those kind of films. <laughs> I know there's, a, I know there's a lot, but, but give me one more, give me one more movie that you can watch again and again. Of all, um, the, all the thousands. Okay, out of all the thousands, you know what? I always go back to watching High Fidelity. 
I love it. I nice. love John Cusack. The yep. album is phenomenal. I love the way that he takes on um, breakups. Um, I just, yep. I, that whole movie just really spoke to me. And I just, yep. yeah, I can, Jack Black was so phenomenal. He was like, awesome. that was the first time I ever saw him. So awesome. yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm a huge John Cusack kind of been, been, you know, been uh, there a lot, a lot, many, many years. I don't want to say how long ago, but um, oh, I'm about where's my three dollars? Yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, <laughs> like, I think uh, even when he showed up in that little small bit role in Sixteen Candles, uh, yeah, he did a he did a great job. Um, oh so yeah, that's fantastic. So last last one before we go, uh, for someone who just wants to, you know, especially during this virus time and everything, uh, wants to get in their kitchen and they want to just, you know, bake. What uh, one piece of advice that you'd want that you would tell them to do uh, before they start? Um, I say, don't be scared. Look, like, look up any kind of recipe that you want, anything that you want to make. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've created things. Like I would get so excited and be like, I'm going to make macaroons. And guess what? They did not turn out the way they were supposed to. <laughs> and they probably didn't taste that great. You know, but it's like one of those, even though like I threw them away, like it was like, you just, you sat, you created, it's that time that you could right. like pop open a beer, or, like a glass of wine. And you just like, kind of like go into just a really zenful stage and so sure. I always tell people that have fun just make it a blast and always like you know challenge yourself don't ever cut yourself down because honestly you probably can bake better than you think you can so that is excellent that's a great piece of advice uh thank you very much for your time today <laughs> Candice you. Coleman everyone uh if you haven't seen it watch her episode on Nailed It and uh, I'm going to post, um, I'll see if I can find that episode and post it so people can watch it. And okay. I certainly uh, uh, w would like to have you back at some time, maybe for another theme, maybe for movies or for beer, yes. because we talked about beer as well. So yes, yes. <laughs> that, that is a fantastic beer. So uh, thanks for it all. And I'm going to toss back to uh, Podcast Hop. Go ahead, Podcast Hop. <laughs> Hey, thanks, uh, Podcast Hub. Uh, I am here now with Alethea Arnold. I hope I said that right. I always have a problem saying your name. Did I say it right? You sure did. Okay, good. Uh, so, and we are here to talk about baking. And Alethea is going to talk a little bit about herself first. I'm going to let, uh, let her go and talk us a little bit about, uh, you know, your baking adventure. So, go ahead. Sounds good. Well, I um, went to school with Javi, believe it or not. Um, and... After I had been in the professional world for a while, I had four kids and decided that I really didn't enjoy corporate America. I didn't enjoy going to work every day. And so I started looking for stuff that I wanted to do that I would like to do. Um, I had never baked. It was not something that I did. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to one of my girlfriends and she's like, you should be a baker. You would really like it. And so I decided that year to make Christmas cookies for my family. And they were so hideous that people couldn't even tell what they were. And I'm telling them, hey, I'm going to start baking cookies. And they're looking at me like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and bake those cookies. And so I, um, I started practicing. I bought a ton of, of cookie cutters from my Christmas money. Mm -hmm. And for three months straight, I just practiced until I could make a Mickey Mouse and make a few other things. And I decided, you know, I think I can actually do this. And that's, what, that's how I started. Nice. Yeah. And what are you doing? And what do you do now? So uh, tell me a little bit about your um, your order, your order, and your site. Okay, so it's all baked to order, and I usually have a theme most of the time. Like for holidays, I'll do a theme, and so I'm making all the same cookies for everybody. But I do birthday cookies and and wedding cookies. I just went to Georgia a few weeks ago to go make cookies for a bridal shower. Um, yeah. It was for a friend and they flew me out and so I made their cookies. Um, but I have a Facebook page called Lula Bell's Bake Shop and that's how people order. Okay. Um, a lot of times I'm booked or I'm just lazy. So it just really depends whether which one it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I can only take so many orders. So sure. um, once I'm full for that week, I'm full for that week. Excellent. Well, that's good. So what are your, um, uh, I know you said you do a theme, but are there some that like a lot of people order that you ha that seem to be favorite for people that order or uh, what? 
Um, back to school cookies and Christmas cookies are really big, and I make those Gretsch cookies that I sh I think I sent you a picture of some Gretsch yeah. cookies. Uh, explain a little bit about that because uh, I'm gonna I'll I'll see if I can throw the picture up during the podcast. If not, I'll put it at the end. Okay, so there are cookies with uh, the Grinch's face on them um, from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it has his little hand, I think, and then his foot. And those are really popular at Christmas time. I get a lot of people to order the Grinch cookies. Nice. Thanksgiving, I make Indian and Pilgrim cookies, which are really big, which I'm sure are not PC at all, but. <laughs> That's okay. It's not a PC <laughs> podcast, so we're all right. We're all good here. Thank heavens. Um, so they do really, really well. I get a lot of like um, people that have little kids order a lot of cookies. They order them all the time. They order them at Christmas, at Thanksgiving, at Halloween, when the kid stubs its toe, loses its tooth, they're ordering cookies. No. So yeah, I've done some for some, some dental um, pharmaceutical sales reps. I make little teeth with toothbrushes for them and they take them to their dentist. Nice. Which is kind of funny because it's the dentist, but they're taking on sweets. Yeah, yeah. I see that all the time. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's good. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, I, I think my biggest sellers are, are their, um, they're, the wedding, they're the wedding cookies. And they make these cookies where the, it's the back of a car and it mm -hmm. says just married on it. And it has two people sitting in the car. And so that's usually what people order for their wedding. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, hey. so that's great. So with the uh, with this lockdown that's going on, and I know uh, you're in San Antonio, so I know it's it's maybe even a little bit more severe than it is here up in Austin, as far as uh, you know curtailing movement and stuff like that. How are the, how are the uh, orders going for you? I would think that there's almost been a, like an increase, or or how is that going? I have more people asking for cookies than than normal, I guess, because they're not getting out and doing stuff. Right. Right. So I don't think it's, I think it's impacted positively if you're baking or doing things like that from home, then there's going to be more people wanting stuff. Sure. Uh, definitely. I know, I know that um, uh, p the people that I talk to uh, definitely have been ordering uh, everything, not just, you know, not, not just desserts, but like, you know, groceries and, and yeah. uh, food and anything that they can. And so all these places are, are just booming right now that do ordering. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm always a proponent for mom and pop uh, you know, uh, stores and locales and stuff like that. So I talk a lot about that through all my podcasts. And so it's great to, to have you on. Um, I had Candace on earlier. And what I'll do is uh, we'll talk, you know, I'll, I'll put your side on there because I know uh, just about 85 to 90% of my family is still in San Antonio. So, uh, you know, that's... Uh, they'll definitely well, are looking for something like that. So uh, you might be getting some more orders your way that way. Awesome. Uh, awesome. I appreciate that. Right. Sure. Um, okay. So let's talk about uh, what is your, once you got going on the baking, what would you say is your favorite uh, either cookie or just in general thing to bake that, that you like to do? Like you're, I don't know, maybe you're having a bad day or you had a bad week or you had a good week. And you want to, you know, you, there's something that you like to bake that really just makes you uh, feel good or calm or anything like that. Well, um, my favorite thing to bake is cookies, honestly. Okay. It's just simple because my brain, I don't know about yours, but my brain's always going. Yeah. Always going. And when I sit there and decorate, that's all I think about is decorating the cookies. And there's like a, a zen that comes over me. And so that's my favorite thing to do. It's time consuming, but it is very rewarding. Other than that, um, I like to bake bread sometimes. I okay. like to make this um, cottage cheese dill bread. That's my favorite bread to make. Really? It's That's really cool. good. It's really not good for you either. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that, that was the thing about this uh, episode that I wanted to do baking. I was like, you know, a lot of the stuff that I used to love to bake and love to eat that are baked, um, I can't eat right now, but they're so good. I mean, they're bad for you, but they're so good. But they're so good. They're yeah, so good. you have to treat yourself. <laughs> and they're all like they're all like Lay's potato chips to me. I can't eat just one. No, no, you can't. I've never, yeah, been, I've never been that person who just you know I'm just gonna have one, just a little, just and then you're like, oh, that's full. I'm good. I'm gonna go ahead and just you know go about my day. No, no. I'm there. I'm there until the cookies are gone. Right. Well, when I would have extra cookies, I got to where I'd feed them to the deer. 
because we have a lot of deer where we live. And so nice. now I have the deer hanging out by my house all the time waiting for oh. cookies. <laughs> yeah. And, and the bad thing about deer is once you start getting a lot of them, it, uh, deer are nice when they're one or two or when they're from a distance. But when you start getting a lot, uh, you realize that deer aren't, aren't as nice as they think. They're not that nice. No, no, no they're not that nice. Uh, but we can have a whole other episode about that. I mean, so some of my other earlier uh, podcasts, uh, we were talking about uh, one of the things is music uh, and how mu music influence a, a friend of mine who's from San Antonio. We talked about, uh, and I'm going on a tangent here, but we talked about like how heavy metal was the big thing in San Antonio uh, in oh, yeah. the 80s. And it was yeah. huge. Uh, and we talked about how music influenced it. And, uh, you know, um, so do you do you listen to anything while you're baking? Or is it a really zen where you're just zen focused and, and there's no music around? It's just you and the tools that you're using. Most of the time, it's just me and the tools I'm using. Sometimes I get bored with myself. Uh -huh. um, and I put on, it's a podcast, oh gosh, After Dark. And it's just like scary stuff. Oh, like kind of normal stuff that you listen to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that because I don't have to pay that much attention to it, but it's just enough to keep my my brain going. Right, right. But for the most part, I don't listen to music when I when I do my cookies. Unfortunately, no. I listen to it every other time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's perfect. Uh, and I think uh, uh, speaking of supernatural, I think I'll probably have to have something in October, and I might have to have you come back and. Uh, because San Antonio is, has a lot of supernatural stuff, uh, you know, yes. and, uh, I think that would be perfect for Halloween to have a Halloween episode where we talk about, talk about that. And of course beer, but we'll talk about the, uh, the supernatural stuff. Cause I have a lot of friends that talk about that, uh, who are still in San Antonio and who grew up in San Antonio and they talk about midget mansion and talk about on PC. There's an PC statement right there. Um, so yeah, but it was, uh, but that's really fun. So we'll have to do that later. So, um, okay. So, uh, two final questions. One of them is, and this one I grabbed from my movies one, uh, let me have two movies that you love to watch again and again. They can be about baking or they can be about whatever. It's, it's, it's all up to you, but two of your favorite movies of all time. I know you may have a lot, but give me two. I like the curious case of Benjamin Button. Nice. With Brad Pitt. That was a good one. Yeah. One of my favorites, uh -huh. and Fifty First Dates. Okay, I can see that with uh, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Mm -hmm. Those are my two favorite. Yes, yes, that is a good that is a good one. Okay, so then what about um, uh, one movie that you like to watch that people might be surprised that you like? Oh man, there's so many, but I guess Pulp Fiction. That's nice. My neighbor j said the same thing. And she was like, uh, out of the blue, she did like Gone with the Wind. And then she wound up for one that people would be surprised, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's yeah. an awesome movie. Yeah, that's what she says. So that's fantastic. Uh, great. Now, uh, now I have more for that for the next time we do movies. Now, um, final question for you before we, we go for the day. Um, someone's really wanting to, like my niece, and, I, and she's going to kill me. One of my nieces, I won't give her name. Um, mm -hmm. loves to cook and is very and loves to bake and is very fastidious about it and very methodical about it uh, but for someone who's who's still quite young um, who wants to get into doing baking whether it's for a business or not just baking in general what would be some advice that you might want to give someone like that I would say go to YouTube and watch a lot of YouTube videos about the kind of baking you're interested in mm -hmm. you'll find that there are um, really interesting people that have a corner on that that you want to do like with me with cookies or something like me sweet sugar bell and I follow her and learned a lot from her mm -hmm. um, do a lot of research and, and don't be afraid to make mistakes I can't tell you how many hideous and ugly things I made that no one could tell what they were <laughs> there was some that, they? They, oh make mistakes because that's the only way you're going to learn Okay. That's the way to learn. And if you can take a class, take a class. There's a lot of a lot of independent bakers put on classes. Uh -huh. And then I know that you can take if you want to do like a Wilton class or something like that. You can usually take it like at a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels. Okay. So it really just depends what it is you're wanting to bake. 
I mainly bake cookies. Some people mainly bake cakes. Some people mainly bake breads. So it just really right. depends. Right. No, it's great. Especially during this time right now, everybody is refining the kitchen or refining the, you know, the tool shed and refining things so that they can go back to it. So uh, yeah. that's great. That's great. Uh, hopefully she's watching. I hope so. <laughs> uh, and uh, she'll listen. I'm sure she'll hate me for it later on. Um, well, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Alethea, for your time. Uh, everyone, uh, Lulu Bell's Bake Shop. You uh, can do a search for her on Facebook for it. Uh, if you're in the San Antonio area, definitely uh, check her out and uh, place an order, uh, especially with the back people, kids are going back to school, uh, whether they're online or not, so they can always use some cookies. So uh, that'd be great. And uh, we will talk again. I'm sure I'll bring you back for another episode, maybe the Halloween one, like I said, and we'll awesome. do Supernatural. That'd be great. Thanks a lot, Alethea. I appreciate you letting me do this. Thanks, Javi. You bet. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, how's it going? This is uh, my first attempt on a uh, on the podcast to try to do my own uh, baking. This is for the Baking and Movies. I'm sorry, Baking and, baking and Beer uh, podcast. So what I'm making today is pumpkin raspberry muffins. So uh, the recipe I, I can share the recipe for you as well comes with um, or actually you use pumpkin puree which is what I got going here with a uh, coconut flour almond flour uh, stevia I use pure cane instead of stevia uh, tapioca or arrowroot starch uh, baking powder cinnamon I removed the cinnamon in case I gave some to my sister Norma um, salt egg whites egg yolks coconut oil vanilla extract and then raspberries and then uh, if you want some more additional stevia so what I did was I went ahead and preheated the oven to 350 degrees so it's getting a little toasty in here I turned off the fan so you guys can hear me I hope everything is coming out for this otherwise nobody will ever see it all right so in a big bowl big bowl I love these aluminum ones by the way so these uh, are stainless steel I'm sorry stainless steel uh, these big bowl I have all the dry ingredients and then what I did was I separated the egg whites from the egg yolks and now I'm adding the egg yolks with um, what else the coconut oil the vanilla the um, well that was that's about it so now I'm going to mix the two together and it's going to incorporate it, so take as much as I can. Where's my handy dandy little spatula to get everything out? How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're enjoying the podcast and the other podcasts. I hope you've been uh, really watching them. I appreciate you if you do. Please join my YouTube channel. You'll get notifications of all the updates. So now I'm incorporating the pumpkin puree and the all well, basically the dry with the wet ingredients. So I'm doing all that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this going and then I'm going to beat the egg whites until they form stiff peaks, which is really hard to do if you're hand doing it. So I'm gonna try and see how long it's gonna take me. So you won't see that part. And then I'm going to fold um, the egg whites and it says frozen raspberries. I don't have frozen raspberries and it, the reason why you use frozen raspberries is because you um, the ingredients call for it frozen so that the raspberries hold together better and so you get more of a raspberry more than a slush. However, I don't have any frozen raspberries and you can use any berry by the way. So any berry that you want. And I do have some frozen blueberries, but I really, this morning I got up and was like, I really want to do this recipe directly. Now I'm doing twice as much, so that's why I'm not telling you exactly how much I'm putting in. So, because I'm going to give some out to people and see what they think. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish mixing up all this together along with the raspberries. And then I'll come back and let you know how it works. So we're back. Okay, so I am putting the last of the muffins in. Actually, the muffins into the 
uh, muffin liners. You can see, uh, you can see real quick what the batter looks like. Uh, like I said, and I have to sincerely apologize to everyone. Uh, by the way, uh, look, you got my hand. Um, because I actually did not have raspberries, like I was just promoting to say that I had, and I kept uh, saying I gotta have it, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. Well, turns out I don't. <laughs> it, so I thought I got raspberries this week, and I actually got strawberries and blueberries. But it turns out, I, I think I mentioned before, I did have some frozen blueberries in the fridge. So I went ahead and grabbed those and put those in instead. So now we're going to get the actual whole berry look because they are frozen. So when they cook, they don't burst or anything like that. So as you see here, we have them here. So now I'm going to put these in the oven. And we're going to go 24 minutes or so. Um, they do mention to make them a little bit that they do go flat because they're not... Uh, a flour that rises. It's coconut flour and almond flour. So if you've ever cooked with that, you realize that things kind of go a little bit down. So I put as much as I can in them. Hopefully they don't come down the bricks. It's a little bit drier dough than I expected, but it's okay. We'll see how it goes. So I'll come back and I'll pull them out of the oven and then we'll try one and see how it looks. Alrighty. Hey, so we're back. This is the final part of the baking for myself. Um, after it turns out um, my my gas oven doesn't like to um, doesn't like to be with go with exact directions as far as timing goes so the recipe that I'm gonna put out there um, talks about cooking it for 24 minutes uh, and actually if you have a gas stove even though you I mean the gas oven even if you go at like 350 like it says to I noticed that I always have to go a little bit longer. So for example, these uh, muffins actually took 32 minutes to go uh, to do it. And uh, I have some other ones in there that are just finishing up. Uh, got about a minute left or so, so I'll wrap this up. So as you see here, here is our, here is my result. Uh, these are paleo style with coconut flour, almond flour, pumpkin puree, pumpkin blueberry muffins and as you can tell I've already had one and as you can tell I've already had two and so they turned out really good uh, I'm gonna let me get real close here as you can see like I said um, they don't rise much uh, they did a little bit when I first pulled them out of the oven and then they settled so you might see that with these muffins if you cook these exactly I highly recommend it the blueberry and pumpkin turned out really good so um, I will be passing these on to my neighbors and see if I can get a, a video bite of them and what they think about it. Um, this is my first time cooking with erythritol. Uh, the, the brand name is Pure Cane. So uh, your erythritol is a, a sugar substitute. It's made from sugar cane but it's not exactly sugar. So uh, it does has a little getting used to taste to it but still I think it's better uh, in the long run for myself, and you might want to try it yourself. Sounds like I got some more coming out of the oven, so I'll go ahead and turn this back over to interview uh, to podcast hop. Podcast hop, go for it. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Chef Javier or Baker Javier, I should say, uh, and the great little Swedish chef uh, montage that you did there. Uh, fantastic so as it turned out the cupcakes turned out really good um, and uh, like I said in the in the um, in the little video there um, it was my first time using erythritol uh, it does have a different taste to it uh, aftertaste to it not a bad one it's just something that is I'm gonna have to get used to as I start moving forward and uh, trying to make sure I have no um, processed sugar in, in any of my diet so uh, it was really good though. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some video bites from the neighbors and see what they think about it. Um, but now we're going to go to the beer section. So let me take the hat off. Uh, yeah, it looks a little, it's a little crazy, but that's all right. So beer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any pumpkin beer, but I do know that I will be doing a Halloween special. So the Halloween special may actually be live. I may actually have some people on it. 
so I know it'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead, and since I'm already pretty long on this podcast, I'm going to just do the uh, throwback of beer. And so I'm going to throw back there and have the beer as the final piece, and then it's going to go straight into the credits. So I want to thank everybody who uh, took the time to uh, talk to me, uh, Candice and Alethea, and uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, doing the interview as much as I did, and I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And for everybody else, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube video, so that uh, YouTube channel, so that you can get notifications when this is ready. Um, and I will be talking during the week as to what my next theme is. So uh, please uh, be on the lookout for that. I am more than willing to interview just about anybody and everybody that I can. So we're going to go to the beer interview, and then we're going uh, the old throwback beer from when I was doing the hundred beers, and then that's it for the podcast. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, I know I did. I enjoyed baking. I might do some more of that later on, uh, especially if somebody has something that they want me to bake. Okay, so I uh, hope everyone has a good day and uh, enjoy the beer review, and I'll talk to you again next week. Hey everyone, Javier here, coming to you from my backyard. Uh, today we're looking at a Texas Blonde from Wild Acre Brewing. Uh, today is Tuesday, by the way, the 31st. Uh, so there it is, made from with the essence of a Zasha hops i think or azaka i'm not sure how you say that anyway there's a look at it nice beautiful color and text let's try a drink a little bit uh not bad actually it's really good on the it's hoppy but not too bad at all goes down smooth has a very nice finish and i think this is um this is really good in fact i'm gonna have another one I'm going to give this one a, um, I think I'm going to go crazy on this one. I'm going to give it a nine thumbs up. Boom. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye.